everything you need to know to go to the San Diego Zoo. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to get in, how to get around, what to see, what to eat, what to do, and where to stay if you're coming to the zoo. All right, let's get right into it. First thing to know, just a little bit more information about the San Diego Zoo. And when they say it's truly world famous, it truly is. This is the most visited zoo in the entire United States of America and is one of the best zoos I've been to anywhere and I've been to quite a lot of zoos. What makes it really amazing is that the San Diego Zoo has been a pioneer in the open air, open attraction concept so that the animals, they don't feel like they're in pens, they don't feel like they're in cages. It recreates their natural habitat. This is like the primate area. And so there's some monkeys that hang out there behind those ropes. But when you look at them, you don't feel sorry for them because they've done a really great job of creating the environments the animals live in. Animals, there are 12,000 animals that live here, 650 species, and on a property that is 100 acres in size. It's really big. You should plan to spend at least four hours at the San Diego Zoo. If you're truly an animal lover, you could easily spend two days here, and they've even got tickets that support that. So speaking of tickets, that's the second thing you should know. The ticket price is here. One adult for one day at the gate is gonna cost you $67. Kids, three to 10, $10 less. $57. Kids under three are free. If you want to come for two days, they've got cheaper tickets, $110 for two days. You can do two days at the San Diego Zoo. You can also split that and do one day at the zoo and one day at the Safari Park, which is the zoo's sister park up in Escondido that has bigger areas, more expansiveness. And if you want to come for three days and you can use one of these days at SeaWorld, it's about $170. The San Diego Zoo is open 365 days a year, rain or shine. You do not need a reservation of come in so just buy your ticket and come any day you want to it's a pretty big place oh and if you're wondering what's the best time of year to come to the zoo well in the winter they close pretty early they close at like 5 p.m in the winter if you come in the summer they can be open until 9 p.m so if you want to get the most money's worth for your ticket come in the summer if you've got kids then you might really want to consider october because in every october prior to this kids between three to ten have gotten in for free that month the third thing to know is about getting into the zoo, and you're probably going to want to drive here. The public transportation options to get to the zoo are pretty slim. There is a city bus that'll bring you here Route 7 or 215. It'll come from downtown San Diego, but you're best off driving. Big parking lot, free parking from downtown San Diego or the San Diego airport. It's about a 10-minute drive. If you're at Balboa Park, over there you can just walk over to the zoo because the zoo is in San Diego's historic Balboa Park, home of a whole bunch of museums and other cultural attractions. The fourth thing to know is about getting around the zoo and you're going to be doing a lot of walking here because this place is really quite hilly. Right now I'm in the center of the zoo across this bridge. That thing right there, that red roof, it's an elevator that'll bring you down there to where the pandas used to be. I say pandas used to be, there are no pandas here currently, but do be prepared to go up and down hills and use this elevator to help you go up and down from the bottom to the top. Now, some other great ways to get around, there is a bus, a two-story double-decker bus that's a guided bus tour that'll take you around the zoo. It's a 35-minute narrated tour. I suggest you do that right away when you come in to get your bearings on the zoo. In addition to the bus tour, you can also take the kangaroo bus, which is like a hop-on, hop-off bus that's designed to get you around the park. You don't have to be on that for 35 minutes. That one's just transportation as opposed to the full zoo tour on the guided bus tour. There's the Sky Fari, which is a gondola that goes from the front of the zoo to the back where the polar bears are. It's about a five minute ride. It's a one way ride. So you ride it, you got to get off, get back in line again, and then go to the other side. You can bring strollers on it only if they're small. Now, I will say this place is actually pretty stroller friendly. It's pretty flat. They've got pretty good ramps everywhere. It's also pretty wheelchair friendly. If you're not into the bus tour or you want some more personal tours, they do have smaller guided tours that you can take like a golf cart around, um, but those cost more in addition to the standard ticket price. Now, in addition to the zoo having really good signs to find your way, download the San Diego Zoo app to your phone because it makes it really easy to find where you're going and even get walking directions from your location. The fifth thing to know is about food and there are quite a few eating options spread across the zoo, burgers, pizza, fries, that sort of thing. For adults, expect to pay about $20. Pretty much all the restaurants are quick service or cafeteria style. There is one sit-down restaurant called Albert's. It's in the Lost Forest area, kind of near the Gorillas. Um, if you want to eat at Albert's, you should make a reservation ahead of time on open table. They also serve brunch on weekends. 
But if you want to save a little bit of money, consider bringing your own food. You can bring food and drinks into the zoo, just no coolers. And if you're thinking you might leave the zoo and get something cheap to eat nearby, there's really nothing to eat within walking distance of the zoo either. Over in Balboa Park, everything's going to be just as expensive as it is within the zoo. So the sixth thing to know is about the shows. And look, it's a zoo and it's educational, so they don't call them shows, but they call them wildlife talks and wildlife presentations. Talks are going to be at the different animal areas where they'll have animal specialists talking about the animals. And then they've got animal presentations, which are the most showy. The one uh, here today was Wildlife Wonders, 2 p.m. at the Wedgeforth Bowl. You can find the whole schedule on the app. They've also got a 4D theater over by the Polar Bears. It's a 10-minute show for $7. That one's a extra price in addition to your zoo admission. All the other shows and talks are included in your standard admission. And the seventh thing to know is about hotels or where to stay if you're coming to San Diego specifically to visit the zoo. Unfortunately, there aren't really any hotels within close walking distance of the zoo, just like there's no good restaurants within walking distance. Your closest bet for hotels is going to be in downtown San Diego around the gas lamp district or in Mission Valley around Hotel Circle. Those would be my recommendations of spots to look for. In Mission Valley Hotel Circle, they're going to be cheaper than they are in San Diego's Gaslamp District, but they're probably going to be nicer in downtown San Diego. If you want some of the nicest hotels, check out the Marriott Marquis or the Hyatt Manchester Grand. Both of those have really fantastic San Diego Bay views. Oh, and by the way, what am I standing in front of? This is in the Elephant Odyssey. This is a recreation of some of the tar pits that are here in California because elephants actually roamed here in Southern California and they found many of their bones in these tar pits. One in particular you can still see that's an active tar pit is up in Los Angeles at the La Brea Tar Pits. But that brings us to number eight, which is what are the best attractions to see at the zoo? And my favorite animal attraction is Elephant Odyssey, where you can see the elephants. No, that's not a real elephant. The real elephants are just back there. They're big and they have a really big area where the elephants in. Again, you don't feel sorry for them here. It's a really nice place. They got a lot of things to play with. When we were here, we even saw them cutting the toenails of one of the elephants and they have a total of five of them. My daughter, the Spunky Princess, also really enjoyed the numerous bird aviaries that you could not just look at birds, but actually walk in to be with the birds. She also really liked Koalafornia, which is the koala exhibit here. The San Diego Zoo has the most koalas on exhibit of any zoo outside of Australia. And finally, the polar bears just at the bottom of the sky fari away from the entrance. The polar bears they're just super cute, and there's lots of really neat places to play in here for little kids. The Spunky Princess said her favorite thing to do the whole day we were here at the zoo was to actually crawl through the polar bear tunnels over by the polar bears. And the last thing to know is that I've got more videos on San Diego, Balboa Park, and beyond. If you want to check out more of my San Diego series, you'll find it here, including my walking tour of Balboa Park that you definitely shouldn't miss when you're here at the zoo. San Diego's best museums are right over there, just the neighbor of the zoo. Well, fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in one of those videos. Link's also in the description below.